we made it back. Uh, the ratings are through the roof. I mean, it really has changed our life. The Murguck Report has blown up. So please share and like this. Um, if you want more reports on the water, I mean, you got to share and like this. So so uh, our ratings go through the roof. Guck, I know this. It's hard to focus on this tournament with how much our life has changed since we started doing this. But this tournament to me, I've said this before at different tournaments, but I've never felt it to the extreme. Feels so much like a Florida tournament, but less controllable, if that makes sense. And I talked to a few anglers, and what I mean by you go to a Florida event, when they're on the beds, I mean, everybody weighs in a bunch of bucks, and then you get the guys who get that right. big betting fish. Right. But here this week, it literally, you know, you talk to guys that are catching them, and they're like, Josh Bertrand, he said to me, I don't know if I'll catch a big fish at all today. I don't right. know. You know, he knows yeah. he's going to catch fish. He caught 70 or 80 of them. But to get those bigger fish, it seems almost random. Is that what you're hearing? Yeah, it is. It's very random. That's exactly it. I mean, we we keep hearing this. The lake's loaded with fish. Casey Ashley said something interesting this morning. Casey said, he goes, I, I think the big ones live right there with the little ones. And he said, sometimes I think the little guys just steal it from the big ones. He said, but it's... They don't school by size, like smallmouth will sometimes or whatever. It's just full of fish, and you never know where that six pounder is going to be living with a bunch of 13 inches. Uh, you know, Josh Bertrand himself said to me, he had a technique for that. He said, I go to the areas I fish, and he said, if I go through a bag of baits and I don't have a big fish, in my head, there's no big fish there. I guess <laughs> yeah. that's that's his number. I like that you, strategy. You got to have some kind of uh, area or way to make that decision, but. He had a great tournament. I mean, the guy I think that, that everybody's talking about, but really we'll see what happens today. Cliff Pace, I mean, he started the day with a 10-5. Like, yeah. might have won a Toyota Tundra within the first five minutes of the event. Right, right. But if you take that 10-5 out of his bag, he's nowhere near the leaderboard. Yeah, I agree. And the big thing, I think, Dave, is there are no huge surprises yesterday. You know, my buddy Bo back home that I fish with all the time said, dude, who should I put on my fantasy team? And I said, not to sound like a genius, because I'm not, I said, Josh Bertrand, because he's used to lakes that look and fish like this. And I said, a guy that you've probably never heard of, Bo, but Ray Hanselman. I said, he's a Texan, fished FLW. I don't know what the guy was eating in 2015, but he won four tournaments on the FLW side. But All Hanselman, in the same division. Like, think about, I don't know if it's ever been done yeah, in another It was sport. like the Ohio River and his home lake down there at Amistad. And, he won all three qualifiers, yeah. all three qualifiers and the championship yeah, that year. Yeah, it's crazy. So I, so I said, put Hanselman on your list because he lives at Del Rio, Lake Amistad. And as soon as I pulled in here to Travis, I thought, this is like little Amistad. It looks just like it, at least it does to me. And so no surprise. Top of the leaderboard for Ray Hanselman. Bertrand, what a great guy Josh is. I, it'd be awesome to see him win here. And he's doing great here. So, And just like the guys told us all through practice, um, it's a matter who gets the big bite. That's exactly, for the most part, how it played out yesterday. If you watch away and yesterday, one of the things we heard a lot about was guys saying, we just need a little wind. I mean, this place, we go a lot of places and you pray for it not to blow. This place, even before the tournament started, I talked to some of the locals, you pray for it to blow here because, I mean, it can go 30 miles an hour and it's still not that yeah. rough out there, but it, triple digits yesterday, super hot. It uh, was a beat down weather-wise. You, you know, if, you, if you're not here, let me tell you, um, it was physically taxing. It was physically taxing to work the way and it was 96, 98 degrees, whatever it was, and just no wind. Uh, you talked a lot about getting hydrated, urging these guys to drink lots of water this morning because we went from cold weather all spring to bam, 100 degrees it felt like yesterday. As Guck said, I mean, he lost me at 98 degrees, one of my favorite bands, and I'll always look at Jessica Simpson and say, she's the reason that 98 degrees broke up. I agree. I mean, it's... She's, she's broke up a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, I'm distracted now. Back to you guys. Yeah.